Okay, so let's look at an important area of cryptography and that is related to pairing based cryptography. And as we'll find, this is an area that's used within a whole lot of privacy preserving methods and within public key encryption. So first we'll start off with the basics of elliptic curves. Elliptic curves are used extensively within inside our security industry. Elliptic curve cryptography is at the core of methods such as the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, elliptic curve digital signature algorithm, and EDDSA. This is a this is a key exchange method, and these are digital signature methods. So how does elliptic curve actually work? Well, we start off with an equation such as this, and we create it within a finite field so that we have um, a prime number of P. So for example, in curve 25519, this is two to the power of 255 minus 19. So we use a, a prime number and this equation here, and we end up with a series of points on the elliptic curve. So if we just ignored the mod P just now, we would end up with a curve that looked a bit like this. And that's y squared is equal to x cubed ax plus b. Uh, and then what we do is that we define a base point on the curve g, an x and y point. And then we define a secret key called x, which is a 256-bit uh, random value. This becomes our private key. Then we add g x times and find another point on the curve. This becomes our public key and we can expose that public key to anyone and they'll not be able to derive the value of x, our secret key, even though they know g, the base point, and p, and also the prime number. When we make it into its finite field method and integer based, we end up with a whole lot of points uh, that represent our elliptic curve uh, equation. So this is the curve method that we have for creating our pairing based cryptography. Just add a Y here to make it cryptography. So let's look at the basic curves that we look for in terms of pairing based cryptography. These are special curves that will allow us to be able to create our special uh, equations. The two main ones that we have are uh, Burrito, uh, Negrig, and BLS curves, which stands for Bowen, Lynn, Scott. The typical curves that we have here are called BN12, and 371 and 381. These are the sizes of the prime numbers that we use with inside the curve. And the larger number shows us a larger prime number, such as having more security. So this is a common curve here that's used in Ethereum and other applications. For, B, uh, for these uh, curves, uh, so a typical one that we have here is the uh, BN254 curve. This is a 254-bit prime number, and this these curves gives us an equivalent of 128-bit security. 
Okay, so let's look at how we can uh, construct our, uh, our method. So basically what happens with our pairing, our pairings, is that we create a bilinear map. And for that we have two subgroups within the side of the curve. This is G1 and G2. So think of them as different ways to represent the points with inside the elliptic curve. One maps onto the G1, uh, the G1 curve, and the other one maps on to a G, G2 group. So we have a G1 group and a G2 group. Then what we do is that we multiply these together to give us a result or the mapping into GT. Okay, so we're taking two groups, multiply them together to give GT. And we would often represent this in terms of this. We have a pairing together to give us a result. This is the symbol for a pairing. We take one point on one curve and another point on another curve and we pair them together with this operation here and we'll produce our pairing value. So let's have a look at how this actually uh, works. So we have special characteristics that allow this to actually work called bilinearity. And these forms are, we can take a value, u1 plus u2. These are two points added together. One point, another point added, and v1. And the way that it works is that that then is equal to this pairing multiplied by this pairing here. Okay, so we've taken u1 and u2 and we can split them out like that. We could do the same if we took v1 plus v2, it would end up the same here. Another pairing that we have is that a u, so that's a scalar times a, a point u, B, V, V is on the, uh, the second, uh, the second group, and that is equal to U V to the power of A B. So the A and the B can actually come out and be represented here. Along with this, we can have another rule that says that that is equal. And another one that allows us to say that that is equal. So we have these bilinearity uh, mappings that allow us to have special appearing relationships. Another one that we have, and an important one, is that if we have u and v to the power of k, then that will be equal, that will not be equal to one, unless uh, k is equal to zero. When k is equal to zero, we end up with this equal to one. But when k is not equal to zero, then our pairing, no matter what, will always be a value which isn't one. Okay, so these, this is the really at the core of our pairing, these uh, sets of, of mappings. And we'll have a special pairing function that will allow us to take a point on one curve, uh, one group and a point on another group, and then to be able to pair them together. The two main, three main methods that we have 
for this are the wheel pairing Tate and ATE. This one here is the most widely used because it has the best performance and is the most efficient. So in most cases we'll be using this method to create our pairing for us. Okay, so let's take an example. An example I'll show you is a very efficient signature method. And with this we have BLS signatures. So initially, and let's say it's Alice, we'll create a secret key. Okay, the secret key is like this one here. It's a 256-bit uh, random value. We define it as a scalar value. It's not a point. And then she will create a public key, which is SK times the base point. And for that, we take uh, the base point from G1, which is this grouping here. This then becomes her public key. The signature is very simple because we basically just take the secret key and we multiply it by the hash of the message that we want to send. But this is a special, special function here. And this is a hash to curve. And basically it takes the message and there's a special mapping function to map the message onto an elliptic curve point. Once we have this, we then just create a normal relationship where we multiply SK by this point to give us our signature. And that's it. We now have a signature for a message which has been signed by Alice's private key. And now we use our pairings to be able to prove the signature for that, Bob will take the signature and also uh, Alice's public key and check to see if she has signed the message with her secret key. For this, Bob takes uh, the pairing of G G1, which is the base point on the on this uh, group, and the signature. And then we'll compute to see if that pairing is the same as her public key and the hash of the message. Okay, so Bob also gets the message and needs to check. So he has that, he has that. He has that and he has the hash of the message. If this computes and the two pairings are equal, then Alice has signed with her secret key. So let's see how this actually works. So we'll just expand this out. So this then uh, becomes E. G1, the secret key, secret key uh, times uh, G2. From there. Okay, so we have uh, that there. And then we can move the secret key over here. Okay, so this becomes E of secret key times G1 through the magic of pairing. Okay, and over here we see that that is a match right there. Oops, sorry, that's uh, so I should have uh, so G. So S is the this is the hash of the message here. Yeah. So 
sorry. So S is SK times the hash of the message. So we have here. So then this becomes SK. Uh, sorry, this is an SK. This is the hash of the message here. Okay, and then that is equal to SK G1 times the hash of the message here and which is equal to the public key of Alice and the hash of the message. And what we should be able to see is that this is the same as that. Okay, so the pairing that we have to check the signature is basically all that Bob has to do is to take the signature, the message, the public key, and then calculate uh, G1, G1, which is base point, and S, this uh, point here, and find the value of that, then find the pairing of the public key, PK here, and the hash of the message map to a curve. Find that, if they match, then Alice has proven that she did sign the signature. So this is a BLS signature, it's a very simple signature and it's very effective. One of the advantages of it is that we can actually perform the aggregation of signatures using addition. Okay, so that's how our signature method works. Some of the application areas that we have for uh, pain-based cryptography are an identity-based encryption. With this, Alice can provide her identity, something about her identity, such as her email address, as her public key. And then we can use a trust server to be able to decrypt uh, the encryption for us. That makes it simpler for us to create our public keys for encryption. We can also use uh, authenticated key exchange. With authenticated key exchange, Bob and Alice can generate the same shared key, uh, but it is authenticated through the identity of Alice and also of Bob. Another area that we can use it in is what's called um, attribute-based encryption. With this, we can generate uh, an encryption key based on a set of attributes. So the attributes might relate to uh, location or time and so on. And if a user can generate these attributes, then they can regenerate an encryption key. But one of the widest usages of it at the current time is within zero knowledge proofs. And these allows us to prove things without giving away the original uh, data. So let's look at one of the application areas for this. And this is with uh, key exchange. So with the Diffie-Hellman method, uh, we exchange parameters. So uh, Alice generates A, Bob B, uh, we have A and G, gets passed over and B and G and at the end of it we end up with A, B, G on both sides. That's known as the Diffie-Hellman or elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman method. But what happens if we have Carol? So if we now add Carol here, so we have Bob, Alice and Carol, Bob, Alice and Carol, it's rather difficult for us to be able to create this key exchange and for it to uh, it for there to be an efficient way for the three parties to be able to generate an encryption key. But the way that we do this is with crypto pairing. So if this is Bob, Bob generates B P. Uh, that's a point on the curve, base point, Alice broadcasts AP and Carol broadcasts CP. 
and then what they do is that they, they will then work out their the encryption key and the encryption key will be BP CP to the power of A okay so just like this one here we're raising it to the power so this will be the key that Alice has and then another key will be AP BP this is Carol's key so that's raised to the C and the last key will be AP and then CP this will be the one that Bob gets so when they compute this pair and then take the secret value and raise it to that then they will get a value and that value should be equal but why is it equal well because E if we bring the A in that's equal to A P B we can bring the C over there so we can end up with that it's obviously a point on the G1 and this is a point on the G on G2 but each of them will end up with A B C P 1 and paired with P2 and then that can be the shared key that they have so this is triparty Diffie-Hellman and a very powerful method that we can use with inside a crypto pairing So finally, let's look at zero knowledge proofs and how we can use pairing based cryptography for, for that. And this is used in a method called ZK Snarks, which is a very powerful method of proving something without giving away the data. And let's say that we need to show that we know the answer to this quadratic equation. In real life it will be much quick, much larger. But so this is Bob proving to Alice that he knows the answer to this equation without actually revealing the answer. And can Alice check the answer without actually knowing herself what the answer is? Let's say it's an extremely difficult puzzle to solve like this, Alice doesn't really want to spend the computation time finding the answer, but she wants to know that Bob has found the correct answer to this. Well, we can use crypto pairing for this, or pairing based cryptography. So if we recap, then we have something like this, that our pairing is equal to 1 when we raise it to the power of k but when k is 0 sorry it's not equal to 1 when k is equal to 0 then it will be equal to 1 so we have a 0 here so let's use that so we'll take our pairing and we'll raise it to the power of k and if k is 0 then we'll let that equal 1. So now we'll take our values and we'll raise it to the power of k which is this x squared minus x minus 42 is equal to 1. Now we can split this out g1 g2 x squared multiplied by e g1 g2 to the power of minus x and multiplied by the pairing of uh, g1 g2 to the power of minus 42 is equal to 1. Now we can drop the x down and split it up so it becomes x g1 x g2 and then this can become G and minus G minus XG. Then 
and then finally we have g1 and minus 42 g2 and now all that needs to happen is that Bob just has to prove that he knows the value of x times g1 and this will allow Alice to be able to create the pairing so if we allow Alice to know these two values then uh, Alice will plug in the pairing here the pairing here and the pairing here and then that should compute as 1. If the value is 1 then uh, Bob has proven that he knows the value of x and x in this case if we work it out I think if we work that one out then that is uh, 7 and 6 0 so he knows that the value is 7. So Bob would send 7 g1 and 7 g2 and then Alice will be able to prove that he knows uh, this. Okay, so that's been an overview of peering based cryptography. We looked at elliptic curves and the types of curves that we use BN and BLS, then how we create a signature, a very simple signature with pairings, the basic bilinearity uh, equations that we have, or mappings, then how we can apply into tripartite key exchange, and then finally how we apply into zero knowledge proofs. Okay, thank you.